Welcome to AP Statistics. In this video, we're going to continue exploring quantitative data by looking at measures of spread. So remember, spread is um, variability, right? How your data varies. The only way your data won't vary is if every single value in your data set is the same, then you literally have zero variability. It's all the same. But other than that, you're probably going to have some type of debt spread or variability to your data. Now here we're looking to measure how much the data varies. We, we really want to measure it. We want to get a, a numerical value that tells us how the data varies. So think here, a large number would imply the data varies a lot. A smaller number would imply the data doesn't vary very much. All right, so let's just dive right into it. So there are three different measures of variability, three different ways that we can measure how a data set varies. We have range, interquartile range, and standard deviation. The first one range is probably the simplest to calculate. You simply take your max minus the min. So it's the distance between your maximum and your minimum value. Now, bigger range means your data is more spread out. Smaller range means your data is less spread out. But here's the problem with range. This is why we actually will probably never ever use range again in this class, is that it's so easily influenced by outliers. So if you have one really large value, your range is gonna look really, really big, but in reality, it might not be that spread out. It's just that one outlier at the high or the low end that's making your range look so big. So for that reason, we're really not going to use range too often, but it is officially a measure of data. You might see it come up, but again, how easy is it to calculate max minus min? Next up is what's called the interquartile range. This is known as the IQR, IQR for interquartile range. Now, this is the measurement of the spread of the middle 50% of your data. So where range is the min and the max, the entire data, the interquartile range is the range of just the middle 50%. So to calculate the IQR, you take the third quartile minus the first quartile. So the third quartile is the 75th percentile. So actually this might be a little bit easier. So if we think about our data from the min to the max, so there's like a lot of all my data. So right smack dab in the middle, is the median, right? 50% above, 50% below. And the middle of the bottom, the middle of the bottom half, is what's known as the first quartile. The middle of the top half is known as the third quartile. So when you break your data into these quartiles, essentially you're breaking your data into 25% chunks. So we got 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, and 25% here. So there's our 100% of all of our data. So the interquartile range is looking at the range of the middle 50%, which would be from the third to the first quartile. Now, the reason why this is a little bit better is because now if there is an outlier at the bottom or an outlier at the top, that will not affect what's happening with the middle 50% of your data. So same kind of thing applies. A smaller IQR means that the middle of your data is very clustered together. A larger IQR means the middle 50% of your data is very spread out. So by looking at the interquartile range, the middle 50%, we're allowing those outliers to not have an impact on our spread. Pretty simple, pretty easy to calculate. Um, Q3 minus Q1. Now how to find Q3, how to find Q1, most of the time we're gonna allow technology to do it for, for us. Not very difficult. All right, and lastly, we have the standard deviation. Now, to me, you know, I don't want to be biased here, but this is the better way to measure um, spread of data. Okay, so first off, what is the standard deviation? Well, it is, it represents a typical distance a value is from the mean. So standard deviation is truly best friends with the mean. You would not talk about the standard deviation without talking about the mean. So let me repeat that one more time. The standard deviation is how far typical data is from the mean. The typical distance a value is from the mean. So if you have a low standard deviation, that means that most data is near the mean. That would be not spread out. If most data is in the middle near the mean, you're not so spread out. Whereas if you have a large standard deviation, that means that the majority of your data is far from the mean. And if you're far from the mean as a collective group, you're going to be more spread out. Now, before we dive too much, let's look at the formula for S. S is the standard deviation. <sighs> well, 
the formula is pretty ugly. I'm going to walk through it very quickly and then I'm going to give you some great information. But first off, it starts off with taking each individual value and subtracting the mean. So you're actually, you know, right here, you're figuring out how far is each value from the mean. You then square that. And then you do that for every single value and you add them all together. So that's our Greek letter sigma that represents the sum, add them together. So you take every value minus the mean squared, you add up all of that, then you divide by n minus one. Now remember, dividing by n minus one is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal one over n minus one. Now, why are we dividing by n minus one? Well, there's no great answer to that that you need to worry about right now. But then we're still not done. We then have to take the square root of all of that value. Now, everything on the inside is called the variance. We will need that term later, but right now it's not a huge deal to know that term, but it's called the variance. I think I've spelled it wrong here. Variance. There we go. The variance. Then when you take the square root of all the variance, you get the standard deviation S. But listen, I, nor the AP test, will never ask you to find standard deviation by hand. We will always use technology to find it. And there will be later videos that I will have that will show you how to do that with technology, meaning a calculator or a computer. You will never have to do that ugly formula by hand. Trust me. Now, again, let's make sure we understand this. Small standard deviation means your data is not spread out. It means that most data is near the mean. Larger standard deviation means you are spread out. Most data is far from the mean. So when I say most, think about this. I'm not saying all data. I'm saying most data. Most data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So if I go up one or down one, up or down, that it's like a net. And if you cast the net one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below, you're going to capture most of your data, all right? So just to kind of give you an example of this real quick, let's say that you have a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of four. So if I take 20 and I go down four, I get 16, up four, I get 24. This tells me that the large majority of my data, not all of it, but the large majority of my data is within 16 to 24. That's not very spread out. That's a smaller, smaller distance there. Whereas if I have a standard deviation, let me, I say, oh, my standard deviation is 12. Now that means my data, most, not all, most of my data will go from eight to 32. That's a much larger spread, if that makes sense. So again, a standard deviation is an important number because it's, it's a typical distance. The majority of your data is from the mean. Could there be data below eight? Sure. Could there be data above 32? Absolutely. But most of it, a big chunk, over 50% of your data will be within one standard deviation. So that's how it gives us a nice measurement here. Now, listen, are you ever going to have to calculate range, which wouldn't be that hard to do by hand, IQR or standard deviation by hand? Absolutely not. We will always use a calculator or some other type of technology. Now let's look at a few examples. So I really want you guys to understand standard deviation. It's actually a really important number. And I want to notice that you will never be given the standard deviation without also given the mean. They, they come hand in hand. They're like best friends, right? You, you really need one to interpret the other, but you need the other to interpret the other. They're, they really go hand in hand. So here's an example. Uh, the weights of several gorillas have a mean of 452 pounds. So remember our symbol for mean of a sample is 452. Um, that's X bar. That's our symbol for the mean. And the standard deviation is 5.3. Okay. So sometimes you might be told, interpret the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is a measurement of how far most data is from the mean. Not all, most. I can't emphasize that enough. So if I take 452, that's the mean, and I add 5.3, I get 457.3. If I take 452 and I minus 5.3, I get 446.7. So this tells me that most of my gorillas, not all, but most of my gorillas are somewhere in between 446 and 457 pounds. Now gorillas, which weigh hundreds of pounds, that's actually a pretty small spread. 
that does capture a, a large, again, when I say most, I'm talking over 50%, but not all, I'm not saying 100%. So most of my gorillas are gonna be between 446.7 and 457.3 pounds. That's a pretty small standard deviation, right? That's, that's not a very big spread when it comes to gorillas. But now let's look at cats, house cats. You guys know house cats, come around your house maybe. So the mean of a several house cats, X bar, the mean is 8.2 pounds. The standard deviation is 5.3 pounds. So again, same thing, interpret that standard deviation. It's the typical distance a cat weight is from the mean. So if I take 8.2 and I add 5.3, I get 13.5. And if I take 8.2 and I subtract 5.3, I get 2.9. So this means that the majority of cats in my sample, the majority of cats are from 2.9 pounds to 13.5 pounds. Now, I want you to notice, I did something on purpose here. I used the same standard deviation. But when it comes to cats, that 5.3 is actually a big spread. Because when it comes to the weight of cats, cats are typically pretty small, the majority of the cats in my sample go from 2.9 to 13.5. And when cats don't weigh a whole lot to begin with, that's a pretty big spread. Whereas when it comes to gorillas that weigh a ton, you know, down 5.3, up 5.3, that's a very small spread. When it comes to gorillas, that's, you know, uh, the difference between 446 and 457 is like, you might not even notice. Like, those are big gorillas. It's not, not a big deal. It's still spread out, but not that spread. But when it comes to cats, 2.9 to 13.5, you're going to be like, that's a tiny cat or, or that's a big cat. You're going to notice that difference. So my point here is um, first explaining what standard deviation represents, but also understanding how you could have the same number, but in different contexts, gorillas versus cats, one could be a large standard deviation where another could be a small standard deviation. So really make sure that, you know, first and foremost, you understand that standard deviation is how far most data is from the mean, but also understand that you got to have the context to understand, oh, that's a big spread versus that's a little spread. All right, now, here is an example of data. You know, 13 females were asked to give um, their commute times to work in minutes. So 13 females were asked, hey, how, how long do you drive to and from work every single day? And here's our results. If I were to say, find the range, like, listen, you could do that by hand, right? We don't have a symbol for range. We just take the 45 minus the five, and we say there's a 40-minute range, right? That's a fairly decent-sized spread. Five minutes is a pretty short amount of time in a car. 45 is kind of a long amount of time in the car when it comes to driving to work. The interquartile range, again, we don't have a symbol for it. We just literally call it the IQR. That's the middle 50%, the spread of the middle 50%. So we would have to take some time to identify the median right there. Let me walk you through that real quick. Remember our formula. This is not a formula to find the median. It's a formula to locate the position of the median. 13 plus 1 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There is the seventh value, 22. That's my median. Then Q1 is the middle of the bottom half. So if I look at the bottom six values below the median, the middle is right here. So right between 13, excuse me, right between 11 and 15 is 13. So that's going to be my first, my first quartile. And then of the top six values, the middle is going to be right here. And the middle of 24 and 29 is 26.5. All you got to do is add them together. 24 plus 29, divide by 2, and you get 26.5. So the IQR is going to be 26.5 minus 13 and we get 13.5. So that means, and the minutes as well. So that means that the middle 50% is actually not quite as spread out, right? The middle 50% 50 goes from 26.5 down to 13. So that's not quite as big as a spread as it is overall. Now, standard deviation, I'm not going to walk through how to do it by hand. Well, I'm going to talk about it, but you would never be asked to find the standard deviation by hand. What you would do is you would first calculate the mean. Then, well, how do you find a mean, by the way? Add them all together, divide by 13. Easy, okay. Then you would take five minus the mean, square that result. Then you would do that for eight. Eight minus the mean, square that result. All the way up to 45 minus the mean, square that result. You would add up all of those squares. 
You would then divide by n minus 1, so that would be 12. My sample size is 13, 13 minus 1 is 12. And then you would take the square root of all of that to get your standard deviation. But again, not going to have to do that by hand. We'll talk about how to do that on a calculator or on a computer in another video if you want. Pretty easy to do. Okay? So that's it. That makes sense. But the one more thing I wanted to kind of talk about here is really making sure that you understand spread, not just through numbers like range and IQR and standard deviation, but also through graphs. So here we have two data sets. On the left, we have data set A. On the right, we have data set B. And let's just say where you were asked to compare their spread. Which one is more spread out? Well, what do they have in common? Both of them are symmetric, but symmetric in different ways, but they both are symmetric, which puts the mean right smack dab in the middle, the mean right smack dab in the middle, maybe right around 35. Again, I'm just estimating here because I'm using a histogram. Now, remember, S, the standard deviation, it's a measurement of how far typical data is from the mean. Which one of these two graphs would have most data near the mean. Well, that's going to be B right here. Look at this. Most data is actually very, very close to the mean. So this is going to have a very low standard deviation. Is their data higher? Yes, but not a whole lot. Most data is near the mean. So that graph's going to have a lower standard deviation. Where this graph on the left from data set A, it's got most of its data really low or really high. That's going to produce a higher standard deviation because the majority of its data is far from the mean. Again, imagine casting a net, right? The standard deviation is how far data is from the mean. If I want to start with the mean in the middle and I want to cast a net, like trying to fish here, I don't have to go very high or very low to get the majority of my data. But from set A, I got to cast that net really low, really high to get the majority of data. That's why data set A is going to have a much larger spread and a much larger standard deviation. Now, the range for both of them is the same, 60 to 10. Both of them have the same range. But when it truly comes to measuring how far data is from the mean, that's why the standard deviation is really important. So the left A is going to have a much larger standard deviation, be way more spread out. All right, last thing to talk about here is it's pretty clear that the mean and standard deviation are best friends, hence they always go together. Like if you're going to talk about mean, you better talk about standard deviation and vice versa. The median and the IQR are the same thing. They always go together as well because remember, the median is the dead middle, 50% below, 50% above. It doesn't even care what the numbers are where the IQR is a measurement of the middle 50% surrounding the median. So that's why they go together. Now, when data is symmetric, the mean and standard deviation are going to be the best way to measure that data when it comes to center and spread. So when we have nice and symmetric data tailing off to both sides, that is when we want to use the mean and the standard deviation to talk about it. Even if we're symmetric, like I showed you a moment ago, like this, but we're still symmetric, you still, you want to use the mean and standard deviation. It's going to give you a very accurate measurement of how spread out that data is and where the center is. Whereas when your data is skewed, left or right, the median is going to be better, and so is the IQR. Because when you're skewed, you're typically skewed possibly because of some outliers way to the left or way to the right. And we don't want those outliers to influence our spread or our center. And outliers affect mean and standard deviation. So when data is skewed, left or right, we would much rather use the IQR and the median to describe the center. Because now when we look at the IQR, we're looking at the middle 50%. We don't care about the far right outlier. We're looking at that middle 50%, which if you look at the graph is not that spread out. And we also want to find that median, which is going to be somewhere over here. Remember, we learned in our um, center video that when you are skewed, in this case skewed to the right, the mean is going to move towards that skewness. Well, that means the mean is affected by those outliers, and we don't want the center of our data to be affected by outliers. So that's why in this situation, we would use the median. So just remember best friends. Mean and standard deviation are best friends when your data is symmetric. Median and IQR are best friends when your data is skewed or has major outliers. All right, that's it for spread. Get ready to learn. Again, feel free to watch other videos of mine that show how to actually calculate spread using a calculator or a computer.